we are exploring Cajas National Park. It's just a half an hour outside of Cuenca, but it's a very important national park for a couple of reasons. Number one, it has eight ecosystems here, uh, which include, it is a cloud forest, there's a system of lakes, and there's also wetlands. So, Cuenca is one of the few places in Ecuador where you can actually drink the water and it's safe. This is so important for people that this national park actually isn't managed by uh, Ministry of Environment or Tourism, but in fact, the city of Cuenca's department that handles water. So we are in the national park, which is protected. There are some private lands around it. We actually drove through them and they are permitted to be here, but because what they do affects the natural water system anything they do from even like building another room in their house has to be approved by the town and in fact it's probably not going to happen because they are very strict about what happens here okay so i am not a huge hiker you can do a seven hour hike here and then the medium hike here is considered to be four to five hours So Andreas is actually a guide in the National Park. He was here yesterday with three people who are actually kind of like me, wanted to <laughs> drive to most of the good spots, didn't want to hike. Also, you're a big birder. He loves bird watching. And I have to say, I was never really into birds until coming to Ecuador, especially the Galapagos. So this is Yabiuco Lake and it is one of many lakes here that then flow into the rivers. The river flows down to Cuenca and that's what we all drink as water. It was like a number two? Yes. Yeah, it's, oh, very good. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's one of the most beautiful toucans. So the reason that this is such a big deal is toucans are usually considered like tropical birds and we are right now at 3,100 feet. So to see one here, this is the only one that you can see. These toucans will fly above 3,000 feet. Not common. It was the first bird I saw. At the end of the 19th century, a German came to this area and opened up this brewery right here um, because it was so close to clean water. Unfortunately, at that time, Ecuadorians hadn't developed a palate for beer. They were used to drinking like a lot heavier, stronger spirits like chicha aguardiente. Yeah, so like if you're gonna drink like something really strong, you probably have this beer and you're like, oh, it tastes like dirty water. Anyway, that has changed because there's a lot of beer now in Ecuador and craft beer and this first brewery is gone. So the structure still exists here yeah. because it's too much of a pain to actually bring it out and demolish it. So they have just reinforced the walls so that it doesn't collapse on people, but they also don't have to do anything with it. It's actually kind of interesting to see like a structure in the park like this because this is a huge structure, but like nothing compared to these mountains. So there are lots of things that you can do here in the National Park in Ecuador. Here, for free, you can go hiking, you can go fishing, you can go rock climbing, bird watching, part of hiking. Um, if you want to camp, you can also camp here. It costs $4 and you should check out where are the recommended areas. You can camp wherever you want, but not all of the good spots are good. So if you want to camp, ask. Otherwise you're gonna be freezing in the middle of the night. Also you need to bring a stove because campfires obviously are never allowed here. Andreas 
just told me that walking through here because the air is so clear that we're adding days to our life. But a couple days ago, a report came out that said every hot dog you eat takes 43 minutes off your life. And Quincano's love hot dogs. I don't know why. They are really good here. They're not like regular hot dogs, they're really good. But you're gonna need to spend a lot of time in here. You're a guide. So it's like your hot dogs and your walks probably balance each other out. No, I'm sad. Oh, now he's sad. Okay. <laughs> Just come out for an hour every day for every hot dog you eat. We've been out here for what, two hours? That's like two hot dogs. We're here at Dos Torreras for lunch and I'm so excited. This is a spot that uh, people drive to just to eat at this restaurant. So you'll see a lot of people from Guayaquil here and also from Cuenca. It is a destination restaurant in the region. It's also the best place to have trout in the Las Cajas National Park area, although this is on private land. Um, there are lots of places to eat trout here. I'm going to have the 2250 set menu that starts with soup, a trout dish, and then dessert. But you can get the trout on its own. I think it's $15. And then also, um, if you just want to spend less money, you don't want to splurge. There are lots of restaurants along the road that serve trout. Andrea says that most of them are only okay and no one has ever raved about them when he's taking them to other places. But if you want to save some money, you can get trout for $7 at Estancia del Juan. And that's actually right uh, as you're coming out of one section of the park. But I think it's just really nice to splurge because this place is beautiful. And he told me it was beautiful, but like I had no idea it was gonna look like this. Like this is a destination lunch for sure. This is draque, so it is an horchata, and in Ecuador, horchata is made with uh, fresh herbs and flower petals, and then on top, they also add a little bit of aguardiente. So they've given you like a little bit of a boozy shot. However, they ask you if you want the alcohol on top. If you just are driving, like this guy, then you get it without, and it's warm, and it's so cold right now, I'm just excited to drink this. Up here they actually have heat lamps, which is good because I'm kind of chilly. This is called locro or loco de papa and it is a potato soup and the reason why I want to share it is that it's actually traditionally a vegan soup. Color of potatoes here in Ecuador, so incredible, very creamy. So loco is a dish that has cheese added to it often and then also egg. But the number one thing that you must have is actually avocado. This is essential. Mmm, oh man. Mmm, everyone has their secret. Some people put in some fresh herbs, dry herbs, or maybe pork lard. Andreas thinks that they put pork lard in this and that's why it's so good, even though you can't taste it. Mmm. Mmm. Chunks of potato too. Yeah, they, this place is mm. the best about that soup. Mm -hmm. This is good too. We got our main dish and I had order envy. So Andreas got this great black plate with crispy trout and sauteed seafood. So he's got octopus and shrimp on it and, and a big laughing gacho and it looks fantastic. So here we've got my plate, which is trout with creamy bacon, mushroom, shrimp. We've got some fried yuca here. And then they've also deep fried something that looks like uh, basil, although Andreas said he didn't like the flavor. And then also they give you this little salad that has strawberries on it. Yes, this plate looks so much better, so I asked him if I could start with his, try his, and then maybe we would switch. This is the crispy trout. Mmm. Well, this is really good. Mmm. 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 It's really good. It's almost in like a citrusy fruit sauce, and then the octopus. Octopus is okay, a little bit chewy. 
Mmm. And now maybe I should try my plate. This is the most popular item on the menu. Mmm. It's really good. And now this crispy, I think it's a basil leaf. Oh, that's not good at all. What? I this crispy you. basil leaf? I don't know <laughs> what it is. I, I think it's one of those garnish things you're not supposed to eat. Let's go to something I know that I like. The yuca. Mm, the yuca's amazing. But you know what? I think I like your dish better. Really? Will you trade me? No. He won't trade me. <laughs> I'm just gonna have... These shrimp are so good. Mmm. Last course of this menu. This is the chocolate mousse. Mmm. It's really good. This is blackberry... Cheesecake. Cheesecake. Oh, this looks good. Mmm. Okay. Now we have the passion fruit. Andreas is calling it a mousse. I feel like it's more of a flan. I really like passion fruit, but I don't like desserts like this. So I'm probably gonna give most of it to him, except for this one. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, I really like this spot. Okay, so this is a bit of part two, I'm not gonna lie to you. This video is in two segments. After we had lunch, it was so rainy and cold, we couldn't do it because as you go farther north in Cajas, it does get colder and it was just kind of miserable. So we decided to call it a day. However, it's two weeks later, Andreas got uh, a tour booked and so I am tagging along to it. We've started now at the highest point that you can go by car. There's a mirador, it is stunning. And uh, we're gonna walk around for an hour and a half. And if you see any drone footage, it is not within the national park. So you're not allowed to fly your drone in the national park. So every time you see my drone footage, I'm actually doing it on private land. So you're gonna see some blue sky, gray sky, but it's all beautiful. Look at this. I am so glad I decided to do this. This is my fourth time to Ecuador, my fourth time to Cuenca, and this is my first time to Cajas. Well, actually, this is my second time to Cajas, but the first time here. So, I think I touched on this down below, but the reason Cajas is so amazing is that, one, there's a commitment um, from the region that this is the source of water, um, they are not going to disturb it. So although there is copper and gold and probably a lot of other things that are very valuable here, this massive piece of land is untouchable. And then the private land is actually under heavy restriction. Um, and Ecuador has a really interesting way of governing uh, basic rights. And so people have basic rights, but also nature has a basic right. So if you tear down, uh, if you chop down a native tree or you do something to the environment that's not allowed, there's a huge fine. Uh, that does happen a lot by international companies, especially mining companies. But also here, um, because this is such a source of water and energy and life for the region, nothing will be touched so far. Like their commitment to this is very admirable. All right, jacket off. It is hot. It's actually gotten hot up here. Actually, it would be hard to get lost because there are so many of these signs and the paths are very well marked. They really discourage you from going off the path because then you could damage the plant life and so they really want you going in one direction. Now obviously I'm biased because my friend is a guide but I do think in a lot of places in Ecuador you do need a guide or you're gonna miss tons of stuff and this is a series of eight different ecosystems and if 
you don't have a background in like geology, biology, what all the sciences, you are gonna miss so much plant life. You're gonna miss which plants are actually native to here, which ones were brought in from Canada, Australia, and how that affects the terrain. Um, you can come out here by bus if you're on like just a budget and just wanna do a trail and see the sights, but Getting a guide here is not expensive and I do think it makes this place so much more special. I have learned so much about Cajas National Park and the signs just don't cut it. And I'm not going to encourage Ecuador to get better signs. Instead, support local tourism, hire a guide, especially now, it makes such a difference. You know, you just take your time, go at your own speed. And then if you realize you're too far behind and it's flat, Maybe you just run a little. But we're headed downhill now, so I think this is a good sign. Not that I want this to be over because these views are great, but it is gonna get easier, I think. Oh, look, I see them down there. All right, so this is a paper tree. This type of forests are native of the Andes here in South America. Unfortunately, they are critically in danger of extinction in most of the Andes here in South America. Here we have this amazing patch of forest. This uh, type of tree provides shelter to the living things that lives in this harsh ecosystem. It has the name of paper tree because if you look at it, this tree sheds a layer of its own bark as a way to protect itself from the wind. The wind is the most destructive element here. The wind extracts water and it'll burn things. So I was wrong. It's not a loop. Well, at least we are not going on the loop. To do this in an hour and a half, you go to the paper tree forest and back. You get the best views, shortest amount of time. It is actually a loop, but that takes five and a half hours and you tend to see the same views because you're going up and down and over kind of the same terrain, just lower. So I think this is the best option for people like me, maybe people like you. What a fantastic day at Cajas. I would say no matter what your fitness level, there is something here that you can do. You just have to be honest about it. You have to wear good shoes. You also have to have pants, don't wear shorts here. Um, I am going to leave the information for Andreas below if you want to contact him. He's really good at understanding kind of what is the best fit where you want to go. I'm so glad I came here. Really, really happy.